like to thank everyone for taking time to come to the drive-in gospel meeting this afternoon. Uh, there's four uh, short readings from the Word of God I would like to read. The first is found in the book of Job, chapter 31, and verse 4. Job, chapter 31, and verse 4. And Job is speaking about God, and he says, Doth not he see my ways? And count all my steps. Doth not he see my ways? And count all my steps. The second reading is in First Timothy chapter one and verse fifteen. First Timothy chapter one and verse fifteen. It says this is a fearful saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. And another reading in Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the final reading in John chapter 14 and in verse 3. John chapter 14 and verse 3. Lord Jesus Christ again is speaking, says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Was I thought of the drive-in this afternoon? A few of these verses came before me. In the book of Job, Job asks the question or makes the statement about God. He says, Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? You know, I thought of a God who counts. Job says here that he counts all my steps. And you know, for every single one of us in the drive-in, and for every single one of us in Porto Bobe, and every single one of us in this world, God watches every one of us. And Job reminds us here that he counts all my steps. You know, you are infinitely precious to God. Your soul will exist forever and ever and ever in one of two places in eternity. If you trust Christ for salvation, You'll be in heaven. But if you leave this life without never trusting Christ, unsaved and unready to meet God, the Bible tells us that you'll go to hell. And as I thought of all who come to this drive-in today, I thought of how precious it is that God counts every one of our steps. It is no coincidence that you're here at the drive-in today. God has seen fit that you are able to hear the message of the gospel again. It is the greatest message you will ever hear because it comes directly from God. You know, as we think of God seeing all our ways, it reminds us that each one of us are watched by God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us, For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And every one of us have a problem, and that problem is sin. We're all sinners before God. Romans tells us we've all come short of the glory of God. And if we were to read further on in Romans, it would tell us that the wages of sin is death. And each one of us, if we're ever going to be in heaven, 
We need the question and the problem of our sin dealt with right here on earth. You know, God watches every one of us. He knows what we are thinking about. He knows our attitudes towards things. You know, you see me up here and you don't know what I'm thinking. And I can see you and you don't know what I, what I don't know what you're thinking. But God knows all things. And God knows if you're interested in being saved. He knows if this is the priority in your life. And we would urge you today to think about your precious soul and where it will be in eternity. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ could say, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You know, are we speaking to anyone today in the drive-in? And we don't say this casually, but we say it very carefully. Are you in danger of losing your own soul? If you never have a day in life when you've trusted Christ for salvation, if you ever have a day when you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, can we tell you you're in danger of losing your own soul? And how strange it is that Job could say all those thousands of years ago, Doth not he see my ways? And count all my steps. You know, God was counting Job's steps. He's counting yours and mine as well. God is interested in you. He wants you to be saved. The Bible tells us that God, our Savior, will of all men to be saved. And it is the most important thing in life that you get saved. Far more important than a career or family or success. But to know that at the end of life, you're guaranteed a place in heaven. It's the most important thing you can ever get sorted while here on earth. A joke could say, Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? God is interested in you today. He is so interested in you that he sent his son into the world to be the saviour of the world. John chapter 3 verse 16 tells us, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you today, and he sent his Son to die for you on Calvary's cross. The Apostle Paul could say, at the later part of the Bible, he could speak of the Lord Jesus Christ and say, the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you, and he gave himself for you. And today, if you would simply trust in him, you'll be saved. You know, we read in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 15, that this is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You know, in the first verse, we thought of God who counts. God who is interested in you. God who wants you to fill a place in heaven. But you know, there's the problem of our sin. And First Timothy tells us of how God has prepared a way of salvation for every single person in this world. Anyone can accept it. It's for whosoever. And we read here that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Christ Jesus, that's God's only Son. God's only begotten Son. We think of one who left all the glories of heaven. One who came into this world. You know, a world that despised him. Isaiah tells us he was despised of men. One who came into this place where he was mocked. One who came into this world where men made fun of him and mocked him. And yet, the only one who walked a sinless life before God. Today, in the drive-in, we want to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ, God's only well-begotten Son, the sinless Son of God. He came into this world, and this verse tells us why he came. You know, he didn't come to get us to interested in religion, and he didn't come to make us good living, and he didn't come to make us do good works. It says Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You know, we've already thought about in Romans how it says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And yet Christ Jesus 
came into the world to save sinners. How did he save sinners? He came into this world and he went all the way to Calvary's cross. And there he was crucified. And he bore the sin of the world. He bore your sin. Isaiah tells us in chapter 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. You know, you can be saved in this drive-in meeting this afternoon through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. The Bible reminds us that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. The Bible tells us there is none that doeth good. No, not one. It took God's only begotten Son to come from heaven to provide a way of salvation. He gave himself a sacrifice for sins. The Bible tells us neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none, under, none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. If we were to read in Acts chapter 16, we would read of a man who wanted to be saved, and he could ask Paul and Silas and say, what must I do to be saved? And the answer he got, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You see, the gospel isn't about a set of rules or laws or a creed. It's about a person, the Lord Jesus Christ, and his finished work on Calvary's cross. And today in this driving, though not saved, and though a sinner, you can be saved. You could come into here not knowing your sins forgiven, and you could leave with sins forgiven, sure of a place in heaven, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. And it's all through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. First Timothy, it says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if you're a sinner in the drive-in today, he came to save you. I can speak for myself. I've got nothing to offer God. Nothing but sins. Nothing that I can do that is right. And yet all I'm depending on for heaven is the fact that he died for me. You know, he died for you as well. We've read in this verse again that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Then we read in Matthew chapter 11, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the greatest invitation you can ever receive. It comes from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. If you're not saved, this is for you. Come on to me. It's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. Come on to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. You see, he doesn't point you to good works. He doesn't point you to a religion. He points you to himself. Come on to me, he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I wonder, is there someone in the drive-in today? And perhaps you're laboring with how to get saved, with how to know you'll be in heaven, with how to be right with God. Perhaps you're laboring to know this, or trying to do it. Or perhaps you're heavy laden. Perhaps God has been speaking to you in the last week. And you know you're not ready for heaven. You know that your sins will keep you out of heaven. You know that if you die today, that you'll be in hell. The Lord Jesus Christ is speaking to you today. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There's nothing you can do that will give you rest. If you try your own works, you'll always have to keep doing more, and you'll never have enough. You'll never be able to work your way to heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ speaks of himself. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor under heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come unto me. You know, you can come to him today and you know for a fact that your sins can be forgiven because of what he done for you in Calvary's cross. Before he bowed his head in Calvary, he said, it is finished. And today we point you to a finished work. We don't point you to anything you can do yourself. 
We point you to what the Lord Jesus Christ has already done for you on Calvary's cross. You can be saved today through what he done for you. We've already thought of that verse that Paul could say, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. John could tell us the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanse of us from all sin. You can have your sins cleansed today through what the Lord Jesus Christ done for you on Calvary's cross. <clears throat> Finally, we read in John chapter 14, and the Lord Jesus Christ here is speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to a group of men who are saved, a group of men who are sure of heaven, a group of men who have had their sins forgiven, and he says, and if I go, he was going away, he was going to leave them, he would go and be crucified on Calvary's cross and give himself a sacrifice for every man. And he would be buried and rise again the third day. And after 40 days, he would go back to heaven. And he was telling about these disciples about this before he did it. <clears throat> and he said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. It was just that phrase, I will come again. The Lord Jesus Christ came the first time. He came into the world. The Bible tells us it was to be the Savior of the world. He came into this world, walked a perfect and a holy life before God, and was crucified in Calvary's cross, and there he bore the sin of the world. He bore your sin on Calvary's cross. We've already quoted Isaiah, he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And you know, the first time he came, he came to provide a way of salvation for every single person, for the whosoever. But in this verse it tells us, he says, I will come again. And you know, as I thought of the driving today, I thought of how many weeks the gospel has been preached here. Some of it, some people have been here for years, and we're very glad you've come. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, I will come again. He will come again. And this time it will not be to provide salvation for sinners. This time it will be to take every single person who is saved back with him to heaven to meet the Lord in the air. And I thought about how terrible it would be to know the gospel message, to know you need to be saved, to know how to be saved, to know about Calvary, to know about that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <coughs> and yet, it's entirely possible that you could know the gospel and you could miss God's great salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I will come again. We don't know when it will be. We do know the Bible tells us it will be in a twinkling of an eye. In a split second, every person who has trusted Christ for salvation will go to meet him in the air. And there will be many, many people who know the gospel. And it's very sad to say that they'll be left behind. It won't be because they didn't know how to be saved. It won't be because God didn't provide a way for them to be saved. It'll be because they didn't go in for God's great salvation. You know, to know this verse that we read before, come unto me. There's, that's a, it needs to be done, come unto me. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us Behold, now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And I just wondered, as I read this verse earlier in the week, <coughs> is there one, and you know the gospel, and you know how to be saved, and yet, we won't say it to you, but you know in your own soul, you need to be saved. Is it possible that if the Lord Jesus Christ was to come this evening, that you'd be left behind? 
You know, you know the gospel now. The offer of salvation is open now. But whenever that moment comes, it'll be too late to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. The door will be shut, and it'll be too late to be saved. You need to be saved. It's a necessity. And you need to be saved now. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You know, I was speaking to a man about this, and he made this analogy. He said, if someone was wanting to get the bus, wanting to get the Newton Ards, and you were able to point them to the bus which takes you to Newton Ards, you know, you could point to them and say, that bus there takes you to Newton Ards, and you could go and watch and wait for the bus coming and see the sign on it and say that, See that it takes you, that's the bus you need to get onto to get the Newton Ards. And the person could know that that's what I need to do. If I'm ever going to get the Newton Ards, I need to get on that bus. But it's until that you get on that bus and make that choice and that decision that you'll ever get to that time. It's the same with heaven. You might know that how to be saved. You might know that if you're ever going to be in heaven, you need to be saved. You need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. But until you go in for it yourself and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and go in for God's great salvation and strive after salvation, it's the most important thing in life, you'll never be in heaven. God's message requires a response. The Bible, the Hebrews reminds us that how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation. You know, there's very few people reject God's salvation. There's some, but there's very few. Most people, if they were honest with themselves, have a wee inkling that it's something they need to get settled. But I'll bring with the, Bible, the way the Bible speaks so directly. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Putting it off to another time. Waiting to see what happens next week. Wasting your time with things that are for this world, with no preparation made for the next world. Can we ask you, is it possible that you're neglecting God's salvation today? We would urge you to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in Him. <coughs> Acts tells us, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Timothy taught, first Timothy, this verse we read today, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If you're a sinner, he came to save you. And we would point you to his finished work on Calvary's cross and tell you that that is all you need for eternity. You simply trust in that, depend on what he has done for you. I just read through these before I stop. You know, Job, we thought of a God who counts. Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? God is giving you another opportunity to hear his word and to hear the message of the gospel. It would be great if you would respond and trust him. It is essential that you respond if you ever want to be in heaven. Timothy reminded us that this is a faithful saying and it's worthy of all acceptation. Now there's not many faithful sayings in the world. Most things, most news that you read, when you read it a few days later, the situation has changed or there's got new details about it. Most of the big offers you read about, there's some small print that doesn't really mean it's as good as an offer as you think. But this is a faithful saying. It's faithful because God says it. And it's worthy of all acceptation. Anyone can accept it. Worthy of all acceptation. What is it? That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He came to save you today. If you would simply trust in what he has done for you on Calvary's cross. Then we have in Matthew chapter 11 the great invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You will only find salvation in him. And today he offers you to come unto him, and he will give you rest. And finally we thought of him saying that if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. You know, there is a day coming when God's offer of salvation will close. Whenever he comes back again, 
He says, yeah, I will come again. I would ask, are you ready today? If he was to come tonight, would you be ready? You can be ready. Because Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. It's God who counts all our steps. Christ Jesus who came into the world to save sinners. Sinners, if they come to the Lord Jesus Christ, come unto me, all you that labor under heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the Savior who's coming again, he said, I will come again. But we ask you today in the drive-in, are you ready? It's important that you're ready. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Thank you very much for listening. We we'll just pray to God. Bless of God, we come before thee and give thee thanks for another opportunity of the message of the gospel being preached. We just ask if there's anyone in the drive-in who is not ready for eternity and is not ready to meet thee, that today they might turn away from anything they could do themselves and suddenly depend on what has been done for them at Calvary's cross. We give thee thanks for thy son. Give thee thanks for his one sacrifice for sins forever on Calvary's grave. And just ask today that a sinner might suddenly, in all their need, trust thy son for salvation and come unto him and we know thy words of promise that they'll find rest there. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall be saved. We give thee thanks for the gospel. We give thee thanks for thy son. Commit the rest of the day into thy hands. Amen.